episode, du skal til at se på Futureport, er lidt uortodokst i forhold til, hvad vi plejer at gøre. For det første er episode på engelsk, fordi at vores gæst han er fra Tyskland. Han spiller for Maryland University og er 23 år gammel. Og du tænker nok, at det ikke hører til på Futureball. Men jeg synes, han hører til, fordi han har en fantastisk historie, der omhandler mere end bare fodbold. Han er en fantastisk person, og han har en fantastisk historie bag sig. Alt fra at være anfører for ungdomsholdene i FC Bayern München, til at tage Tyskland til en kvartfinal i VM på 17 niveau og spille mod folk som Phil Foden og Sancho og Schuermeni, til at få hans debut for FC Bayern Münchens første hold i en venskabskamp, hvor han spillede med Ribéry og store spillere. Så hvis det lyder som noget for dig, så synes jeg for det første, at du skal subscribe til kanalen og følge os, fordi de her episoder de tager lang tid at lave, og jo flere subscribers vi har, jo mere godt content kan vi producere. Så hvis tallene på vores side er gode, jamen så pr- producerer vi også noget, der ligner det. Nå, jeg vil ikke uh, snakke mere. Nu synes jeg, du skal høre episodet og nyde det. Så læn dig tilbage og nyde et virkelig godt episode med Alexander Nitzel. Welcome back to Future Ball, and I'm very excited today because I have a big guest on. Uh, this episode marks the first time we will be speaking English on this podcast. Alex Nitzel, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, how is everything uh, right now and uh, the last couple of, I don't know, years in the US, uh, I suppose? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Very excited to be here. Um, yeah, no, you know, I'm good. I, As you said, I'm I'm living in the States now. That's why we're speaking English. I, Yeah, no, the last couple of years were... A hell of a ride, I can tell you that much. I started off to, I moved to America in spring 2021, so in January 2021. I finished my bachelor last year in the in December, and I just got started with my master's program. And yeah, you know, it's very nice that, I, that I'm that i over here with the chance to, the opportunity to play soccer and still get my degree. And yeah, no, it's I've been great. Yeah, and obviously our Danish listeners very keen to learn about a guy who came through the ranks at FC Bayern Munich, then switched to Hoffenheim, and now at uh, Maryland University. You've been on an an exciting journey throughout your career as a footballer, and I I'm I'm keen to learning about how you play football and what you've been through. But I'm also very very interested in how you are as a human being. Uh, you sound very humble, very very uh, you know just a good person in general so i'm very excited for this uh, this podcast today um normally on futureball we start off with 10 quick fire questions and i've uh, prepared some for you if you're ready for them absolutely shoot let's go okay the first question is what was your best moment on the field as a professional footballer my best moment that's a tough one i had a lot of them i think the most adrenaline i've ever felt was in the quarterfinals of the of the european championship under 17 because we played against netherlands it was a very tight game it was very close like we were you know they were good they are good and it was a tough game it was 1-1 the whole time i got subbed on a little bit before halftime as a left back um And yeah, like it wasn't up and down, but we were pushing, we kept pushing. And, you know, like that was also the game that determined, like if we win that, if we were going to win that game, we were going to go to the World Cup. So we're like, we need to win that game because we really want to go to the World Cup. And then we scored with like two minutes left. And yeah, that was just pretty electric. So that was pretty cool. But I, while I'm saying that, that was for me personally, very emotional, but then also giving my, I guess, debut on a friendly match with the first team of Bayern Munich. That was also pretty sick obviously <laughs> yeah and I, i saw the video from from that uh, game where you played with the likes of ribery it must have been absolutely amazing to to be in there for any footballer i suppose oh, yeah it's very special and uh what opponent was the most challenging to play against in your career mm, i would say the english national team under 17 the 2000s generation of England football. I mean, they're kind of loaded. They have the likes of Sancho, Phil Foden, Uncle Gomez, like all those guys. So yeah, whenever we faced them, it was pretty, pretty tough because they were individually incredibly talented, but also as a group, they were just, yeah, they were a really good team. 
Yeah, I could imagine. And funny you say that many of the people who've been on the podcast before, they also say the English, uh, you know, squad is very hard to beat. It's just, I mean, the best academies in the world and everything over there, right? That is true. They are they are pretty good. We I, I got lucky. I, I also played against Manchester City in the in the youth league. And yeah, no, like whenever you go there and play them, it's just it's insane because they are just very, very talented. But like, yeah, no, I would say the English under 17 national team was the toughest opponent. Uh, who was your biggest inspiration uh, within the world of football? Good question. I I think that changed for me a couple of times throughout my career because I played a whole lot of different positions and like for me like I had people inspiring me for soccer in general but then I also had like people that were inspiring me for my position so like obviously like growing up Bastian Schweinsteiger those guys Philipp Lahm they were incredible but then I also like I really liked Mats Hummels because he also came out of the academy from Bayern Munich and he was like kind of like on a similar path that he was like playing center back but then started playing in the midfield to like become more comfortable with the ball I guess um, and that's how I started off my career and I got com not compared with the skill level but like from like all right we want you to play more in the midfield so you can be more comfortable with the ball and like that you can develop yourself better and then that's yeah no so like I had a lot of guys looking up to but obviously like there are guys like Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo like those guys like when I didn't know watching them play soccer it's just oh my god I love this game and those guys make me made me fall in love with the game yeah the, it's the typical you know the legends of the game but for you I think growing up in Germany as well a lot of you're a defensive player yourself and yeah. there's a lot of defensive legends within Germany you 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 name them yourself so yeah I think it's uh it's good you say uh Philipp Lahm and and, and Hummels as well in there yeah um absolutely. Which match do you remember the best from uh, your time as a professional? It's a good question. I think there are a lot of games that you, I don't know how it is for other guys. For me, it's the way like when there's a game that's very emotional, they just stick with me. Like I relive them over and over again. There are very, like people would say random games, but there was a game we played in the league under 17 in 2016, I think. We played against... Who did we play? I don't know. It was just a regular league game, and we were like kind of like on top, but like we were competing for the first spot, but we were we were down two nothing at halftime, and we ended up winning that game five two, and like games like this are just insane. The weather. We started off in the sun, then it was snowing in the middle, then we finished off the game in, in the beautiful weather again. Like it was just insane, and like those matches always stick out to me. I don't know. There were I had a bunch of highlight games. I also like. The final four, the semi-final in the youth league, insane highlight. Or for example, the every single World Cup game, I I can relive those over and over again. The European Championship games, I don't know, like they just all stick with me. I wouldn't say there's like a the individual game that sticks out with me the most because there were so many highlight games and yeah. Yeah, so you're like when you play a game, it's obviously become emotionally you you become emotionally attached to it, and absolutely you kind of that person that that sounds good at least. Um, what is your best football training experience? Obviously, you played with Bayern Munich, you played at Hoffenheim. You must have had some kind of level of where the training was just unique. What was your best experience from the training? I would say I obviously I got very lucky with that, but I had the chance to train under Pep Guardiola a couple times. And like his training sessions were just insane. Like what we did, the quality of the players, the quality of the people around me, the quality of the practice itself, the way it was set up, what we did, what we got out of it, it was unique. And I think those are like the memories where I'm like, oh yeah, those practices were the most fun. And like, I learned the most and yeah, I would definitely emphasize that. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And that leads me on to the, the next question. I mean, it is which coach had the greatest influence on your development as a football player, but obviously you didn't play regularly under Pep Guardiola. So yeah. there must be some kind of coach we don't know here in the audience from you. Maybe you want to uh, condemn them and oh, yeah. say thank big you. Shout big shout out to Tim Walter. Um, what a guy. He unfortunately just uh, lost his job or separated with um, Hamburg. But yeah, he was my youth coach for two years and I think I made my biggest steps underneath him. We won the under 17 championship together 
Um, incredible human being, incredible coach. I still have a very good relationship with him. And yeah, no, like he definitely had the most impact on me. Yeah, and uh, he was at Bayern Munich or Hoffenheim at the time? He was at Bayern Munich. He came in from Karlsruhe the way I, like when I moved up to the under 17 level and he became my coach. I was one of the player, like one of his first players at Bayern Munich. And I was lucky enough to have him for two years. And yeah, we had some, some great times together. Some great times. Yeah, exactly. And uh, number seven, I know you are a player of great versatility. You could play left back, you could play center back. And I even read somewhere that you could play as a defensive midfielder. So what was your favorite position to play in and why? In the midfield, um, definitely holding um, central midfield player because I feel like I can get the most involved. I growing up from Bayern Munich for me it's like I love playing with the ball I love I love being dominant I love playing possession <clears throat> and in the midfield I just feel like I get the most touches I'm the most involved I can I don't know decide the rhythm of the game I can I'm still like I'm defensive nature so like I still do get a lot of defending but for me it's like when we defend it's with the purpose of winning the ball back and like being in there and being fully involved is just the most fun and yeah that's why I love the midfield but I do like other positions too as you mentioned like just being on the field is just fun but midfield is my favorite position midfield is your favorite position it's also position of incredible responsibility and I think you've played a, a lot of those positions as well throughout your career um, which football club did you dream of playing of uh, playing for as a child Bayern Munich I grew up in Munich <clears throat> it was my dream club from <laughs> from a very young age on so when I had the chance to transfer there it was a unique experience for me and I was so excited about it and I still love the club and like yeah I transferred somewhere else but Bayern Munich is those are my roots that's where I belong and yeah it's always my it's always been and it always will be my favorite club yeah exactly and it's some, something else when it's your boyhood club you're from Munich right so Absolutely, obviously yeah. Uh, yeah it's been a I can imagine for any footballer even though it's at the low league level to play for your your boyhood club it's it's so special I, I must think so yeah for sure. Um, what was the toughest decision you had to make in your football career Mm, leaving Bayern Munich, I would say. That was very, very challenging because it's not that I wasn't on a path that could have continued at Bayern. It wasn't that we both wanted to separate things because I was captain in the under-19 and my contract was expiring. So, like, I was in talks with Bayern Munich about extending my contract, staying. But I just felt like I might have better chances to go somewhere else to become pro because since Bayern Munich is such an incredible club with players from a different universe, it's like my chances as a 18 year old becoming a professional player there, I'm not sure if that's going to work out. So I felt like going somewhere else would be easier. But that all, that decision included moving out with 17. I moved to Hoffenheim, which is three hours away from Munich. So like moving out with 17, leaving my family, my friends behind moving away from the club that I love the most, like from all my friends, what I've known, that was definitely a big decision, was definitely challenging, but with the greater goal in mind of becoming a professional soccer player, it felt like the right decision. But yeah, that was definitely challenging. Yeah, I could imagine. There's so much pressure as well from the family, from the friends and the club as well. It must have been a yeah, tough decision to make. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, it's the final on the list, but I have one more afterwards because you said you were a Bayern Munich fan. <laughs> uh, what's the best advice you've ever received as a footballer? Mm -hmm. Don't overthink it, play. Um, there was an advice I think Joshua Kimmich gave to me and some other of the young guys, um, but he explained it a little bit more, so like there's more to it, but like that was the best advice because we were about to start practice with the pros and it was like a bun I, I don't know maybe three four five youth players and he came up to us and was like hey guys just so you know like this is the intensity here this is how it goes don't overthink it play do your thing play your style there's a reason you got invited to be here you guys have the quality and we're gonna do it and what do you have to understand on a professional level people are gonna get mad at you or whatever or like in general there is a high intensity there's a lot of emotion in the game um, but don't get overwhelmed by it. If someone yells at you, put it in perspective. Think about, all right, emotions are involved. I don't know, whatever it is. Take the advice that you think is important out. Listen to that, but 
just because someone says something doesn't mean you have to change everything. Just be yourself, go out there and never forget why you're playing soccer. Play soccer because you love it. And when you when you're happy that you that you get to play soccer, you will be at your best. So don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, and I think a lot of youth players coming into a youth setup at a professional club, you are under enormous amounts of pressure. And I think sometimes that can be forgotten, why you were there in the first place. And then they become very bad and they become demotivated and anything. And you see lost talent go to the bin because of that. Uh, So yeah, it's good to see you haven't been affected by that. (laughs) I don't know if I haven't been affected by it. I definitely think that like... It is something that while you're while you're playing good, while you're getting good feedback, it's easier to deal with. But then when you're like on a low, you know how it is when you play soccer. Sometimes you're on a better, have a better time. Sometimes you have a more challenging time. Sometimes you play more. Sometimes you get benched a little bit more, and like it's tough to go through this. But yeah, I think like always remembering that while it can become a job, it's not a job. It's an unreal job. It's more like you you do what you love, and you don't do it to get paid um then it gets easier with it and i think like for me now like being a little bit older um putting it in perspective i i never played soccer because i want to i mean obviously i wanted to become a professional player but not because of the money or the fame or what now but because i love the game it's just playing competing on this level playing is just the best thing that can happen to you so yeah i think like when you remember that and you don't overthink it then you can you just get to enjoy the game more and i think that's that's what's the most important thing it's never been the glory. It's never the. It's never been the fame. It's always been the passion for you. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely love that. Absolutely. And uh, question number eleven. And I just wanted to ask because it's a it's a tough time in Germany in the Bundesliga. Who do you think is going to win the Bundesliga? I knew you were going to ask that as soon as you said yeah, the question for me. Yeah, about exactly. Bayern. I knew it. Well, I obviously hope Bayern Munich is going to win. Um, but it's tough, you know. Leverkusen is playing in an incredible year. They. Xabi Alonso, what a coach, um, what a player, everything, what he yeah, combines, exactly. what he's doing with that team, how they play right now is insane. They they would deserve to win, but obviously I still hope and I still want Bayern Munich to win. So and since I'm still a Bayern Munich fan, I'm still saying Bayern Munich is going to win the league. Yeah, I, I, I definitely didn't doubt that. But uh, as yeah. a Liverpool fan, I also hope that Xabi Alonso has a little bit of a a downfall at Leverkusen, so maybe he would come to Liverpool in the summer. So I'm rooting for Bayern as well, just because of that. But but obviously, I think it's cool what they've done at Leverkusen and everything. For sure, yeah. But let's go back to you. It's about you today, Alex. Um, I want to go back, go back in time to where it all started. Your first memories with the ball. <clears throat> My first memories with the ball. Um, yeah, I have an older brother. Um. And we grew up in a town right outside of Munich. So we, my parents moved into a village, I would say, that's like, it was smaller back then, now it's a little bit bigger, but like a lot of young families moved there. So whatever we did, we just went outside, started playing soccer and we would play with the kids in the neighborhood everywhere. And like, I don't know, since my brother is three years older, he definitely was better, obviously, (laughs) at a very young age. Um, But no, just playing soccer with my brother, his friends, my friends, whoever was around was just incredible. We didn't play at a club or something in the beginning. We just kicked the ball around with my parents, with my dad, with my cousins. Just, I don't know, uh, literally whatever we did every single day, it was just like, all right, let's go play soccer. Let's go. Let's go do something. Football. Sorry, we're we're not America anymore. Let's play. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, no, it was just all the times whatever like even getting up in the morning it's it's shitty weather outside but let's just kick the ball inside around until our parents would get angry or would get scared that we would <laughs> that we would break something but yeah soccer was just, football was just always around and yeah those are my first memories your first memories as well like any other with the passion it starts at such a, a young age yeah. and it must have been cool to have your brother as well bec- uh, to play football as, um, together oh, yeah. i guess of the passion course, was yeah. shared in the family. Absolutely, yeah. No, it was huge. Like everyone around us was playing, and I, <laughs> and it's it's a big thing. Like my family always makes fun of my brother and I because every single time we went on a vacation, 
and we had to buy at least one ball at least one if it was a small one if it was one you can use in the water or whatever but like we couldn't come back from a vacation without an extra ball and we would use it throughout the whole vacation it was always basically the first day we just arrived haven't even settled in yet but let's get a ball so we can kick around so <laughs> we would be we would be occupied so my parents could i don't know go grocery shopping do whatever you have to do on vacation but we would be occupied with playing playing football yeah <laughs> doesn't matter where you were just get a ball exactly. and we can start playing we don't have to go anywhere as long as you have a ball we're happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i mean it, it's it's an amazing journey you've been on as i've stated so many times um but let's move up the years you're playing at a at the local club i suppose and then yeah. Bayern munich comes knocking at the door what club were you playing at at the time it's called tears von Neuried. um it's the local club like it's a five minute walk from my parents house so my brother played there, everyone in the neighborhood played there, all my friends played there. The guys I went to school with played at the same club. Um, yeah, we were all, everyone was just there, guys, girls, everyone. We were all together every day at the club. We would go there, play for practice, but even if we wouldn't have practice, we would just be there and play. So yeah, so, then yeah. When, I was, when I was 13, um, I think 13, 12 or 13, I'm not sure um that's when like some clubs started reaching out to me so yeah that's when Bayern Munich knocked on the door at the the local club yeah they called my coach and then my coach was like hey Alex Bayern Munich reached out they want you to come on a tryout um can we facilitate that are you down to do that like is this something you're interested in obviously it's like <laughs> this is unique <laughs> but like you know he, he wanted to be polite um and be and ask me first to before he gave out my phone number and then, yeah, a bunch of different clubs in in Munich reached out to my family um, and asked me to come on tryouts. And yeah, my first tryout, my assistant coach from back then uh, was the one driving me to practice because my parents were working. So I didn't know exactly how to go there, but he was like, you know what, this is exciting for me. I want to come. And yeah, then he drove, dropped me off there. And what a story. What a time. It was so nice. Yeah. Yeah, the, the assistant coach dropped you off at practice and then you were there for a tryout at Bayern Munich and yeah. look where it uh, got you through the ranks at Bayern Munich, obviously, from a young age. Tell me about that. Uh, we're going to Bayern Munich. It has to be said, one of the best clubs in the world. It's no secret. One of the best clubs in the world. Absolutely. And in Germany, the biggest club in Germany. So when you came to the club, what what sort of got you started? How did you get off from that? Okay, you're now a... A permanent player here at uh, the youth setup. How was it? Um, it was a funny time because I thought, like, yeah, I'm probably not good enough. I'm just gonna go there, <laughs> see how it goes. I'm probably gonna sit on the bench every day. I don't know. I probably won't play ever. And if it sucks, like, I still had to, like, I can still say I w I played for Bayern Munich, although I would never play. And then I was <laughs> like, but like, obviously, I'm gonna give it my best because I want to play there. So we'll see. But like, I didn't want to put myself under pressure. And I think my environment like my family and my friends like nobody ever put pressure on me which was nice so it was always like go there have fun and if you don't like it you can always come back or do something else but like not once did i think with hold i was 12 or 13 about like oh my god yeah that might be my path like i always thought like yeah i'm just gonna go there see how it is and we'll see where it takes me and the fun part was that when i si signed i didn't sign but like when i committed to bayern munich at that young age we already had a big family vacation planned. So I was like, all right, guys, um, I'm going to be gone for the first like three and a half, four weeks for preseason. And my coaches were like, wait, that, that's not how it works and at a youth academy. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. But um, so, yeah, I missed basically the whole preseason. Um, and then we started playing and the first two games I didn't play. But I always felt like I could play in that team. And my coach also wanted to wanted me to play. So, yeah, we found a way that I made my way on the field and then yeah I started playing from there and still not thinking about anything played my first year there and then towards the end of the year I got called up for the Bavarian like like a selective group for like that every state has basically in Germany and like we got called up all right we're like supposedly the best 15 20 players from our state and so we were playing with guys from I don't know Nuremberg or what else 80 60 Munich like those guys like all together we would go on practice and then we would play against um all other states um yeah and that was like the first time I was like oh maybe maybe I'm actually like not as bad as I not as bad as I thought I didn't think I was bad but like yeah maybe maybe I'm actually like fitting in and like I'm 
I'm a core member of this team. So yeah, then after in the way it works in Germany, like after every year you have talks with your coaches and like maybe depending on how old or how good you are, I guess, with the director of youth academy sports at this team. And then like after every year you get reevaluated because some people have to leave and some people get carried over to the next year and then there are transfers coming in. So yeah, I was always like, okay, what, what's going to happen? But since I played basically every game in my first year, um, I wasn't worried about not getting carried over. Um, but yeah, so that was under 14. Then I moved to under 15, started playing under 15. Um, <laughs> and then midway through the season, my coach calls me and is like, hey, like, you know how it works like under 14 and under 15 are basically the same age category so you can play both but like academies switch it up so but he called me and it's like saying like yeah and our under 14 is struggling like they they might get relegated if it, if it keeps going like that so we need you and like two other guys because under 15 i was the captain so he was like yeah we need you and like two other guys you need to play a couple of games with the second team so we can make sure that they hold the league because we're Bayern Munich. <laughs> we're not gonna embarrass ourselves and like get relegated so for the second half of the year, when it was, it already looked like we won't win the championship anymore because another team was so far ahead of us. We were second. Um, yeah, so we went down, played under 14, had a great game, won six or seven games in a row. Then they finished second in the league. Um, and then I came no back. No more relegation. No more relegation, no. <laughs> the other teams are pretty pissed that the older guys played with them. But, you know, it's fine. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> so then, yeah, no, and then he they called me in and were like you know like that evaluation talk again and they were like hey listen like the three of you guys you you did a great job you you helped our club out a lot and we would we want to reward you guys so instead of moving to the under 16 we would like you to participate in preseason for the under 17 with the age group 99 i'm at 2000 um so like you will go there for preseason um and then we will see if you have a chance to play then you're gonna be there um, but if the coach decides after the preseason that you probably won't be a starting player, you're going to play under 16 because we want you to get minutes in. Like, you need to play. Otherwise, you can't get that much better. So, um, yeah, then I started playing preseason with the under 17, with the 99-year-old guys, born in 99. Um, and that's where I met Tim Walter, my my former coach I mentioned earlier. Um and yeah, I, I it was good because it was a big transition time and I became part of that team. I got named second captain um, and started playing basically every every game with them in the under 17. And we were we were a pretty good team. We were very close to to winning the championship lost on the last day, unfortunately, against we were first. We were second. Stuttgart was first played against them, lost three two. They won uh, the championship. We didn't suck. But yeah, and then that's when kind of like it started um, that I got calls from the national team about like, hey, why don't you come on a on a training camp with us? And then like here and there, there would be an international match. And yeah, that's how it started. And then the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. And at that time, you were about 16 years, 16, 17. Yeah. Six, yeah, 16, 17. In my, when I played under 15 was the first time when um, I played, when I practiced with the pros. Um, very random. I was, we were in preseason. Um, we were the only team practicing that day. And then Hermann Gerland, I don't know if that's in Denmark, if that's a name in Germany, it's a very big name. He's the guy at Bayern Munich. He's always been that guy. Um, and he came up to our practice field and was like, yo, like this guy got injured from the pros, but we need someone to hop in so they can play 11s uh, tonight. So my coach was like, all right, just take Alex. He's going to be, he's going to fit in. And I was like, what is going on? I practice in the morning. It's like, it's the second <laughs> practice of the day. And like, I'm already starting to practice, but now I'm going to go to the pros. Like, what is going on here? But obviously like incredible opportunity. So yeah, I got lucky that when I was 15, I practiced with the pros the first time. Um, or maybe even 14, I don't know. Um, and yeah, from that on, like the coaches knew of me and knew me and Hermann Gerland also supported me, which was great. So whenever the pros needed someone, they just reach out to me. It's like, Hey, can you come over, like practice with us? And that was great. Yeah. So at the ages of 14, 16, the coaches were so impressed. You could just go out to the Bundesliga squad and train with them. Yeah. Um, I mean, the way it works is like the pros, they they set up their practice, but sometimes they just need extra bodies. Let it be, they want to practice pressing. Um, 
or building through pressing through a pressing team so they would call up like youth players to come in practice with them yes so we would press them when they would build stuff like this that's how it started but then sooner or later we would get invited just to practice with them so we would be there to get the exposure but for them to see us but also just to to add additional bodies to practice and at that time you must be so excited i mean imagine going up to the pros were there someone in particular you were looking up at the time of that squad in that squad there were a lot of guys i looked up to but my very unique impression was when the first day i got picked up to go to practice with the pros um herman gallant the guy i mentioned before came and picked me up it's like all right we practice in like two hours but why don't you come over and chill like at the professional facilities um so we walked over there and i'm walking in and literally the first person sitting there in the chair is philip lam the captain of the team like what a player like everyone knows philip lam and i'm like walking in there and like he literally like never talked to him before and he like comes up it's like hey nice to meet you i'm philip um I, as you know i'm the captain of the team if there's anything you need just let me know um we're here i don't know the kitchen's over there if you want some food go there get some food um we're gonna meet in the locker room at that time and just like thanks for being here and like just incredibly nice very humble and like that impression unique and then and then there are some guys like Thomas Müller that just come and joke around with you, although you've never met them. Or <laughs> David Alba, like what a what a guy! Like after practice, we would sit down the youth players, and he would just come sit down with us. He's like, "All right, guys, tell me about you. You're the new generation. Like, what's up? Who 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 are you? How old are you? Like, what are you guys doing? Like, that's so nice to have you here." And like those guys, like those impressions were so unique because like playing with them is one thing, and like it's incredible. But like meeting them as human beings and how they interact and how nice they are, incredible. And like as a young kid, like having a Philip Lam tell you like, hey, take it easy. If you need something, just come talk to me. Is I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. So yeah, that was a very unique experience. Yeah, it's a dream for anybody, not even, not only footballers, but just people in general to meet the legends of the game. And you were just standing there. Yo, the kitchen is over here. You can just go over here if you want to. So casual, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so nice, yeah. Nobody expects that from the legends of the game, just uh, to Absolutely. be so down to earth. But Absolutely. It must have been a, an amazing journey there. And from yeah. there on, it, your career just takes on, selected for the World Cup and the European Championships. Take me through how that happened so quickly with a... You know, the German Football Federation said, okay, we're going to take you out for, for the World Cup. Yeah, so it was um, when I was playing with the under-17 with the older guys, um, I got called up to one, two, maybe three um, international friendlies. And my first game was against Italy. Um, and yeah, like the coach just reached out and was like, hey, you're getting called up. Um, we just want to like figure out who we're going to take to the European Championship, which is our goal. Um, and yeah, you, we want you to present yourself. We think you're a good player. Like, let's see how this works because you know how it is with team dynamics. It's not only you don't, obviously you want the best players on the field, but you want the best players together on the field. Like some players just fit better with other players. And then you also want to have the right personalities mixed together because if you go to a tournament, it's, you want to make sure that there is no, I call it virus on a team. So just like figuring out who fits together, who works well together and who are like the best I don't know at that point probably like 30 35 maybe 40 players so we can like have a pool of players we can work with and like work towards our goal of going to the euros and then eventually the world cup so i got called there played i think i played fairly well because i got called up again um <laughs> and then yeah no i just like i i did my thing at bayern munich kept on playing at bayern munich and every once in a while we would get called up to the national team and would play tournaments or whatever and then yeah, and I was basically the starting right back for quite some time throughout the end of under 16 and the beginning of under 17. And then we had a tournament right before the European Championship qualification where we went to Portugal to play against Portugal, England and Netherlands, I guess. And I personally had a horrible tournament. Like, oh my God, like I played so bad. So I was like, I'm not going to get called again for anything because I just didn't play well. We play, I played against Sancho. He, I don't know, completely destroyed me. He was kind of better than I was. Um, but even against Portugal, I just personally didn't have a good day. Um, so I was like very like on the like 
getting nervous ish about like if i'm gonna get called up because by then obviously like i was with the team so many times like i really wanted to play the european championship i want to be at the qualification i wanted to be a big part of this team so but then luckily um we won the german championship with the under 17 that year so i guess kind of like that success with the team like kind of like brought me and my two other teammates that were with me more to attention again um, and then we went to the European qualifiers. I played 10 minutes in the first game, maybe 20 minutes in the second. And then we were already qualified. Um, so I played the full game, um, the full third game of the quali of the qualification tournament because it was four teams and the first two make it. Um, played the full game and that's the first time I played in the, as a holding six um, with the national team against Turkey. And I personally, I had a really, really good game, luckily. And that's when the coach basically told me like, yeah, no, like those are the qualities we need to get out of you. That's going to add so much value to our team. And like, I don't know, I hope you can tell from our conversation, I'm a personable guy. So like I was pretty close with like the whole team. Um, so it was also like personality wise a good fit. So yeah, then I was like pretty sure, all right, we qualified. I had a good time. So I'm probably, I'm probably going to get invited. Yeah. Then we went to Croatia to play the European Championship very exciting time um very very unfortunately we lost in the semi-final against spain who ended up winning the whole tournament we they were a good team but honestly we could have won and um, we went to pks lost in pks very very unfortunate still regret that i didn't take a, a penalty should have should have stepped up but yeah. i did um, <laughs> but yeah no it was very very unsatisfying to leave the tournament after the semifinals in that moment but afterwards still very rewarding like what an incredible experience we we played the european championship we got to play in the semi-final obviously if you go to a tournament as a german national player you want to win because that's by a munich identity that's german national team identity wherever you go you you want to win you want to be part of it so yeah but through as i mentioned earlier through qualifying for the semi-finals in the european championship that's how we qualified for the World Cup later on that year in India. So since I played the last, I played the whole semifinal and I played most parts of the quarterfinal and I played a good amount in the group stage, I felt confident in getting called up for the World Cup. Um, in between the championship, the European Championship and the World Cup, there was a transition from under 17 to under 19. So we got a new coach in Bayern, at Bayern and Sebastian Hoeneß, very successful coach at Stuttgart right now. Um, and yeah, so I he named me captain, which was great for me. Um, and then yeah, we got called to I got called to the World Cup. Played in the World Cup. I played every single minute in the World Cup. Um, we played the group stage, won our group stage, played the quarterfinals or round of sixteen against uh, Colombia, one four nothing. What a game! Um, and then we played in the quarterfinal against Brazil. Um, same year, by the way, as Vin Vinicius Junior, but uh, he he was already transferring to Real Madrid, so he yeah. was not to come on the World Cup, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we lost two one, very very unfortunate. But the whole tournament, the World Cup, was an incredible experience. Being in India for so long, it's such a different culture and everything, but like being part of such a big tournament was incredible. Like we played in front of I think sixty eight thousand people. It was incredible. The stadiums were completely filled. So many people came out to watch us play. So many people watched us play in the internet, on the internet. Like it was incredible. Like the feedback we got, like everything, like being part of a World Cup, no matter what age group it is, it's just an incredible experience. And being there was just wow. Like from the beginning to the end, everything was so special. Like the memories, they, they will just stick with me forever. And like such an incredible journey. And like, I got so lucky that I had the chance to experience all that. So yeah, that was my journey at Bayern Munich and the German national team. Yeah, obviously incredible story. I love just sitting back and, and listening to that. I can really feel the way that you were at the European Championships and, and the way, you know, the passion, it just comes out of you like that because there's a lot of times uh, throughout your career where you've had these big aha moments, like this is so huge. And I must say, I have a question for you who or like that Spain team that you lost again in the Euros are there some particular names in that you should we should know uh, played on that For team example, I would say Ferran Torres kind of sticks he out he played on that team 
Yeah, he played on that team. He was the right winger and I was the left back. And he got nothing on me in that game. I can tell okay, you that. Okay, he got okay. nothing on me in that game. I actually you destroyed good... him. You destroyed him. You had yeah, him in yeah, the pocket. I definitely <laughs> held him back a little bit. Uh, no, like who else was on there? Um, some guys went to Dortmund after that. Uh, how, who's the guy who was injured for a long time and just got back for Dortmund? The Spanish guy. Oh, I don't know. Spanish guy for Dortmund. Yeah. I don't remember all the names because I'm not big with that because I don't talk about it this much because I don't yeah. want to like come across as like too... I don't know, you know, when you talk about those things, when yeah, you just exactly. try to really drop them in, like you come across as like, I don't know, what? why is he talking too about Too flashy? It? Or, or like... Yeah, I don't know. So like, I don't like talk about it as much, but yeah, no, there were definitely like a lot of players you would know when you look into it. But yeah, I don't know, like we played friends, for example, and like a lot of times like one of the big guys that played there was uh, Tuka Mendy or however you pronounce his name he kind of is like a good player now you know there <laughs> yeah exactly at Real Madrid and everything <laughs> yeah just something something like that so I don't know like guys like this like incredible yeah and also a lot of footballers just dream of playing at that level it's high intensity all the time but when I hear you telling the story it's like you know we just go there and uh, we do our thing and you know we go home to Germany and uh, hopefully it's just gonna be good so no very yeah. very relaxed is that some German mentality to just do do that I don't know I I I would hope so but I I do think that once you're in that environment it's just like I would never want to say that it became normal like it never does and it's a thing you need to consistently remind yourself that like this isn't real like this isn't reality like you get so lucky that you get to be there but I think that's also what helped me personally to like not get nervous and for before games or anything because I always was like oh my god this is such a unique opportunity for me and I who knows for how long one injury and I'm done or like whatever um so like you don't know how long this is lasting so I always wanted to make sure that I'm fully experiencing the moments and like enjoying every single part of it like losing in the semifinals in the european championship fucking sucks sorry for saying yeah. fucking, but it's like it's okay. sucked you know what i mean <laughs> but um you're just like you know i i can tell my children way back uh, yeah i i did play a semi-final against spain i was part of it i was i i had the joy of experiencing all that so always i always like kind of reminded myself like how fucking special it is and how unique it is and like how much joy it brings to me to be with my friends with my teammates and in those situations and yeah that's kind of like you know like it does become normal it never does in a way that you don't get excited about them anymore but i think if you put too much pressure on yourself on your team or whatever then it, yeah. you can't enjoy it as much anymore and, and then it becomes real work and exactly. that's not what football is about it's about it's a beautiful game you want to enjoy it every single moment you have yeah so it's always been the joy for you and i can i can feel it it's not when you say it it's not uh it's you mean it with the Absolutely. yeah it's genuine and you know i talked with your friend before jonathan shout out to sesentic sound of where he works yeah. hello jonathan <laughs> but uh, he told me that you got an injury at some point but was that at hoffenheim I did get injured for my first time at Hoffenheim, yeah. Um, it was very unlucky because someone fell on me and then I tweaked my ankle, so I had a partially torn um, syndesmosis. But that honestly wasn't that bad because I wasn't playing at the time anyways. So like either if I would have been fit or not, my coach wouldn't have played me. So yeah. I didn't have pressure to come back as quickly as possible to play or anything. I could literally like focus on healing. But, and that I also wouldn't say that was the reason why I moved to the States. I, I left because when I was at Hoffenheim, my first year was very successful. That's when, when I still played under 19 and we went to this final four with the, um, youth in the youth league. Yeah. Very nice. And then as soon as I came in the under 23, new coach, never saw the field, never, never got called up for the pitch. <clears throat> and that was a challenging time like it sucks because you just do what you love but you don't get to do it as much as you would want to so i was trying to find different ways then there were some thoughts about transferring but that all fell through then COVID happened so it got even harder to transfer somewhere and then i just got tired of it and like for me it was always the way i think that's also why it was less pressure for me because i always knew education matters to me i i also know that there are other things in life that satisfy me that make me happy 
and soccer is as we talked about before more of a joy for me than a job so i just looked out for different opportunities and then i luckily got in touch with someone who has his own agency uh, tony mamodali big shout out what a guy definitely like he wasn't a coach but definitely one of the people with the most impact on me um and he came up with like hey listen alex if you are interested there could be a way for you to move to the united states get your degree there get a full scholarship and play at a unique university and still play soccer or do what you love to do and like play again so that's how i came to the states and then once i moved to the states that's where i got my injuries i had a bunch of those now unfortunately i think it's part of the game it still doesn't make it easier i tore my hamstring i pulled my groin a couple a couple times i had a chronic pubic bone inflammation um those are things that always like set you back a little bit and it sucks because you don't get to do what you love to do but luckily i always had a great team around me if it's the medical staff if it's the coaches if it's my teammates if it's my friends that supported me throughout those times and like it was never in question for me that i would like stop playing because of my injuries because i always knew that they are temporary and yeah right now i'm fully healthy enjoying the game again so <laughs> yeah I don't want to go to the States too quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, we still haven't moved from when you moved from Bayern Munich to Hoffenheim. So why did you decide to do that? Uh, what level were you playing at Bayern Munich? Was it under 19 or the yeah. reserve team? Or? No, it was the... I played one year under 19 at Bayern Munich. And that's when my contract expired. And then I sat down with my agent, my family, my closest friends. I had, I had an offer from Hoffenheim, I had an offer from Bayern Munich um and yeah i it wasn't about numbers or anything it was about where is the higher chance of becoming a professional player and hoffenheim there was the first year they qualified for champions league so i was like all right great if i would go there i could play youth league which is a big thing for me because i wanted to play youth league because i wanted to get that exposure but i thought or i still think that the chances of me becoming a professional player are much higher at hoffenheim than at bayern munich because it's a smaller club it's they are they were or they still are known for their incredible youth work and like that how many players from the hoffenheim academy went to become professional players either at hoffenheim or somewhere else so i just wanted to to give it a shout because i was like i can stay at bayern munich live at home not change anything um and see where it takes me or i could leave my complete comfort zone i just graduated from school so i had nothing else to do and like I decided, all right, let me put everything on one card for a couple of years and see where it takes me and go move, leave my comfort zone, put all emphasis and focus on soccer and football and see where how it goes and see where it takes you. And like, yeah, we talked about it previously earlier, moving away from home with 17, definitely not easy. But um, yeah, no, it was the right decision and it didn't work out that way, but I would do the, I would make the same decision again because it was the best decision with the information that was presented to me at that time. Yeah, so you moved to Hoffenheim with the hopes of, okay, I could become professional. Not the best team in Germany, but at the moment, qualifying for the Champions League, being in Youth League, it, I could see it for myself there. Uh, a huge opportunity to obviously develop as well in your footballing career. But you come yeah. to Hoffenheim and you played Youth League that season and an amazing uh, campaign for Hoffenheim in that Youth League yeah. season. A 4-2 oh, yeah. victory against Real Madrid. Just take me through. You were playing at the European club level at that time. That that must be huge for a young footballer like yourself at the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, the good thing is coming from Bayern Munich, I've played youth league before with uh, Bayern Munich because obviously Bayern is always part of the youth league. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was very, very special, especially like being part of a team like Hoffenheim was never qualified for Champions League before and therefore they never played youth league before. So being the first and so far only team for Hoffenheim that ever played youth league was incredible, like from the beginning on. But then even making it so far in the tournament was insane. Like I mentioned earlier, we had Manchester City in our group, for example. Like what a team. They are incredible. But yeah, we went up there, we we played them. You brought up the Real Madrid game. Also, I didn't bring it up earlier. One of the absolute highlight games, because yeah, we 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 won against Real Madrid 4-2. Insane. It was incredible. And like being exposed to those teams playing on that level, massive. Like so much fun and like such a change of perspective. Because at Bayern Munich, wherever you go, you always go and you play like we're Bayern Munich. Like we're gonna do this. Yeah. 
But then you go there with Hoffenheim and like the, get the kids from Madrid or City or what now probably never heard of uh, Hoffenheim. Like who the fuck is that team? Like <laughs> where, where are they from? Like what is going on there? But then you go out there and you're like completely the underdog. And I think that was like one of our biggest advantage that everyone completely undermasted us because we were a good team. We we had great players and we yeah just went out there. We had no pressure because if we lose, like nobody expected us to win, but we always knew for ourselves that we are good enough to win those games. And then we actually did. So yeah, it was very, very special and what a great time. And being at the final four for the youth league, the tournament is held at Nyon in Switzerland at the headquarters of the UEFA. Being there, like talking to the president of the UEFA, sitting in a room where so many trophies get Award, like so many people get awarded with trophies in there yeah, you exactly. see in the screen like sitting in the room playing on the facilities being there incredible and yeah it was very unfortunate that we had not a single chance against porto under 19 destroyed us one that year they were incredible they had so many good guys the, their goalkeeper already played what seven games at the time for in like actual champions league games with the yeah. first their two center backs were consistently with the first team but just came to play youth league with the under 19 again um, they were just good, but yeah, being exposed to that, wow, that was special. Yeah, and ex and you've played for the best throughout your career by Munich, and to move to Hoffenheim, completely a, a change in ha the, the way you see the game, because now we're not by Munich, we're not the best, people <laughs> expect us to lose. That must also be a different feeling for you com uh, compared to the one you had at Bayern Munich. Absolutely. Big transition. And I definitely a big challenge for me because it's it got so indoctrinated in myself that I'm like the Mir San Mir. It's like a yeah. big part of my identity. It's like wherever I go, like, hey, I'm here. Like I'm in the middle of the room. Like, yes, I am humble, but I'm confident enough to be like, who the fuck got something on me? Like I'm <laughs> a music exactly. player. You know what I mean? Like what's going to happen? Like nothing. So like definitely coming somewhere and being the underdog, a big change. But I think that personality trait i would say all that mindset still carried over and i th i hope that i influenced maybe some of my teammates as well i don't know but we definitely kind of like developed throughout the year a mentality of like yes we are the underdog nobody expects us to do what we're doing but we know that we can and that we will like there was never like when we play when we did scout on madrid there was never one day where we were like mm, we might lose against those guys like for us it was always like yeah we're gonna go out we're gonna do our thing we're gonna win there's no way we're gonna yeah, lose that game. so yeah that was definitely like while it was a change it all comes back to why we're doing what we're doing it's because we love it so let's just go out there have as much fun as possible and then we will see what comes out of it but we were always very certain that we have the qualities to 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 go where we wanted to go so it's always that passion and every time we talk it leads back to that passion and you've always had it for the game it's so beautiful to see and yeah. you were at hoffenheim for how many years now at that time at that time that was my first season so i moved there in the summer 2018 and yeah the final four of the youth league was in the spring of 2019 yeah and what i wanted to talk about because us as Danish um, viewers, they obviously know the Danish league system and how it works. You know, you yeah. have the under 19 best division, the best clubs in, and they can't relegate from that. I think they play there because uh, the senior teams play there. And if the senior team relegates, they go into the other league and so on. How is that league structure in Germany? Obviously, I saw you played a little bit of uh, reg regional Bundesliga, but how who do you play against on a day to day basis in Germany? Um, so it depends on the area you live in because Germany is kind of large for Europe. For Europe. Um, yeah. So the way it works is from under 17 and under 19, we have a Bundesliga, like the same way we have in the first division, like with the pros, but they get split up into three divisions. So under 17 and under 19, Bundesliga means you have three regions. You have South, Southwest, you have um, the Eastern Conference, I would call it, and yeah. you have north so like for me Bayern Munich and Hoffenheim always were in the same league so we play against Nuremberg uh, Stuttgart um who else is in that league Mainz uh, Freiburg 
um, all those teams, like all southern region, all teams from the southern region. And like the good thing about that is what what I really like, it's not based on the first team. Like the way it started, yes, it was on the first team, but now like if Bayern Munich under 19 sucks, they can get relegated and play in the second division. Yeah. But although the first team probably wins the championship, so like it's 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 individual. Um, yeah, it's individual. Process. Yeah, you can actually impact where you are going to be next season. Exactly. So and then the way it works for under 17 and under 19, when you win your region, um, you go to a tournament against the uh, winners of the other three divisions and one division like that's like a five-year ranking which league performed best whatever like one of those three divisions gets two seats and then you have four teams competing in uh two semifinals so you play one team um at home and away game whoever wins that one comes to play the final at a yeah somewhere else and that's in under 17 that's how we won it like we won our conference and then we played against schalke in the semifinal and then we played against Bremen in the final. And you won it? We won it, 2 nothing. In because Munich. Because you Munich. <laughs> you Bayern Munich, exactly. No, we were a incredible team that year. But yeah, like luckily we, we had that, like we hosted that final. Um, for me as a Munich kid, incredible. Because my whole family, my friends, everyone was there. Um, it was very, very special. And yeah, that's how the league system is set up. And it's the same in the under 19 that you have three divisions, but it's called Bundesliga. It's the highest league you can play at the youth league, at the youth academy level. And yeah, you go up from there and like under 19, as we mentioned before, you have the chance to play youth league, but that's not its individual campaign. That's from like the way it starts is how the pros are. But then once the group state start, starts, it gets an individual competition. But yeah, that's how the youth league system works. Yeah, sounds awesome because here in Denmark, it's very much based on the senior teams. And I think sometimes we forget that um, the the youngsters, they want to have an impact. It's not because we played so well, but we're going to get relegated because our team, they played so well. Uh, yeah. yeah. So obviously, I, cool to hear that in Germany. Yeah, no, that's definitely huge. I, I like that we that you feel the pressure. I don't know. Yeah. In, in both ways, like in a good and in a bad way, but just the pressure. Yes, you can get relegated, but you can also like, you can win something, you can move up, like you can, yeah. you can have, as you mentioned, like you can have an impact. And I think that's huge and that's very, very nice and unique. So we've been through Hoffenheim, we've been from Bayern Munich and your last stint at Hoffenheim, let's just be honest, you were not satisfied with the way you were trying to develop, but you couldn't get more or or how you couldn't get into games at Hoffenheim at the the last end? No, I never played for the under twenty three. Um, definitely, my coach wasn't the biggest fan, but I would also I don't want to like put it on him. I definitely just like yeah. didn't perform at my best, didn't play my best. Um, so yeah, just like never fit it. And then we went through it briefly earlier. So I tried to transfer after the first um, half of the season. That fell through because. Um, for various reasons. I'm not sure if they ended up not wanting me. The coach called me. I was already on a visit at a club, but then they called me like, hey, our first team coach got fired. So we have a new coach. And the first thing he did was he dropped four guys of the first team to the second team. And as long as they don't find a different club, it just doesn't make sense for us to sign someone else on their position yeah. because they kind of come from the first division. But if that's the reason, I don't know. I like to think so because I would want to be like, all right, they actually wanted me. It just didn't work out. But it's professional soccer. It's a short living. You never know. Like maybe they just weren't as interested. But yeah, and then um, COVID hit. We got sent home. We couldn't practice for, I don't know, a couple of months. Um, but then also no club had any like security about planning. So it was tough to like, like on the top level, transfers were still happening because like, you know how the, the players know how good they are and like, they will have an immediate impact but financially clubs just were very uncertain if they are going to go out of business if they can even facilitate any transfers or whatever it was just a very messed up time and yeah it definitely was from a from a football perspective challenging to figure out what to do next unpredictable uh, very unpredictable yeah and i i'm the type of person i want to have my own like i want to make my own decisions i want to be in charge of my own life and i didn't love that 
soccer didn't give me that satisfaction because I had no idea where I'm going to be in two months and like where I'm going to be like I have no it's out of my control like, if a club calls me that's where I'm going to go I'm going to move there and for me personally also being a professional soccer player for one and a half two years was it's challenging in a way that you have so little to do that you get easily bored but you have so much to do that you can't really do something about it because you want to be ready for practice you you we practice at 11 a.m for example so you're not going to do anything before 11 a.m because you want to get ready for practice mm -hmm. and then you're done by like 5 p.m it's like all right the day is not over yet all i did so far was practicing but i don't want to do too much because i've practiced tomorrow morning so it's like you're kind of like in the sweet spot of like everything is happening but nothing is happening at the same time and like I don't know it's like it definitely was a great time and I learned a lot about myself and like moving out living on my own great experience but definitely like a lifestyle was like I'm not sure if I'm satisfied by that because I want more out of my life so I started studying online but that's very very challenging like in Germany when you play soccer at that level it's not that you can actually go to university and like sit in class because it's your full-time job like you have to be there and there's no way out and like soccer is the main priority so it's tough because also nobody around you is doing something like everyone is just playing soccer trying to become move to the next level um so yeah that was definitely a challenging time and like not playing was hard to deal with very unsatisfying very yeah just it just made me feel very uneasy because i was not happy with my situation so i tried to figure out what else to do and that's when tony mamudali the guy i mentioned earlier came into my life um he was when he was young in a similar position that he wanted to become a professional player and it didn't really work out so he um went to the states studied here and played soccer here um and after he graduated and everything went back he works at hoffenheim now um he founded his own company to help like agency i would say or yeah supervisor maybe advisor however you want to call it um that helps players like me to find a different path combining soccer and another life so he asked me if i would be interested in doing that and i was like i'm not sure if i want to move to the states i don't i don't know how it works i don't know what this is all about um but he was like let's just like see what happens and then you can make a decision if you want to or not so he created a highlight tape of me um sent it to a bunch of different schools in america And then I was on a lot of, lot of Zoom calls with the United States, with different schools, talking about like what I should do, what's best for me. Um, luckily, I had on my resume Bayern Munich, 21 caps for the national team in Germany, Final Four Youth League with Hoffenheim, like all these incredible milestones I was lucky enough to be part of, that there was a decent amount of interest. Um, but it was still COVID, so it's not that I could have gone on a visit or anything. Um, so yeah i basically i had some offers and i was like all right let me try this let me see how it is and similar approach to when i went to Bayern munich i was like okay let me go there for a semester and then uh, after four months i can re-evaluate re like is there where i want to be or do i want to come back and four months nothing's going to happen in those four months because i can either stay at hoffenheim and not play and be unhappy or go somewhere else explore and worst case if i hate it over there i still had the experience of living abroad doing my own thing and then i can come back and do something else but After moving here, I pretty, pretty easily and very fast realized that that's my path for now because I enjoyed being able to learn so much more, being exposed to the college experience and playing soccer and actually playing again. I immediately started playing every game and I felt like I had an impact and I was able to to do what I love to do again. So it made me fall, fall, in, love, fall in love with the game again, which was insane because that was taken away from me and I didn't qualify to play but being back on the field competing against other teams not only practicing was very very nice and yeah that's why I'm here now yeah and you're in the US at the University of Maryland it's yeah. I think did you win a state championship or what was the trophy I saw on your Instagram with the uh, <laughs> Maryland team Two years ago, we won our conference. So America is even bigger than uh, Germany, way yeah. bigger. <laughs> so there are like, it's set up like the way college sports works. There are three divisions. You have division one, division two, division three, and it's the whole school. Like it's not only the football team, it's the American football team, the golf team, the, I don't know, lacrosse team, whatever it is. 
they are all ranked in divisions. So like our whole school is division one and part of the Big Ten conference. That's like the East Coast conference kind of. And yeah, we two years ago, we won our Big Ten conference, qualified for the national championship. Unfortunately, did not win that one, but um, competed in that one. And that's the goal for next season that we're going to go out there and we have the chance to win three trophies and by a Munich, Maryland, same mindset. If we play, we're going to play to win. So yeah, that's the goal. It's not Bayern Munich anymore. We go to the field and we're Maryland. <laughs> we're Maryland, but the mindset stays the same. You go yeah, exactly. there. Maryland actually is, I think, historically speaking, I think they won the most trophies in soccer. Um, how we call it over here. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool place to be. My coach is like the most successful and highly decorated um, soccer coach in the United States for college sports. Um, so working with him, working here is is very cool, very unique, um, but definitely a very, very different game. Um, definitely a very different style of playing football. And yeah, it's a lot of fun, but it's very different. It's a, it's a different approach because for me now, it's not about becoming a professional player anymore. It's about competing for as long as possible on the highest level while getting my education done so I can sooner or later make a living with what I like to do that's not soccer. Soccer will always stay one of my biggest passions. I will still watch a lot of soccer. I will always play soccer, but I want to play soccer for the fun of it and not for the commercial part of things. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, now like I'm making use of being captain of this incredible team and being here. But once I'm graduating, I'm not going to try to become a professional player anymore because I want to play soccer for the joy of it and not for, all right, I want to like move around the whole time to figure out if I can get paid throughout the next year and all that stuff. I want to play soccer so I can have fun where I can play with my friends and yeah. Always the passion. It comes back there. Yes. And it's so beautiful because normally on this podcast, uh, the Future Ball podcast in Danish, we've talked with these players and they want to go out. They want to play European. You know, they've been locked in Denmark for eight years of their elite campaign or whatever. Mm. So for them, it's always about getting more, getting more. For you, it's just having that balance between I have a life outside the pitch and I have one on the pitch and on the pitch we're there to, uh, you know, to have fun. And I love that a different perspective to get on the game because I'm used to getting it from the highest uh, here in Denmark and talking to some very great talents who are bound to be one of the best players in the Danish generation at the moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's definitely been uh, a learning experience, obviously, to look at it again. Why are we all here? Why we love the game? Because football is just a joy to watch. Everybody loves football. And sometimes I think we can forget that that's why we are here. And Absolutely. also that's why I wanted to bring you on today because a lot of our listeners, they also have dreams and aspirations to be a footballer. And we want them also to learn about this, to not to have too much pressure on themselves, to just enjoy the moment, be in the moment and play football because remember why you why you were here in the first place. That, that was uh, so cool to, to hear even all the challenges and everything, it always comes back to the passion for the game. Absolutely, yeah, no, I think that's like, looking back on my career, my the biggest thing for me is always like, to bring it down to why you're doing what you're doing and not take anything for granted because it can leave you like that. The way it starts in soccer, you like from one day to another, I transferred to Bayern Munich and out of nowhere, I'm in my whole bubble, playing with the national team, practicing with Ribery, I don't know. And next thing you know, it's gone again. And yeah. like, you don't want to like be like sad about like, oh my God, maybe it could have, maybe potentially I could have been there. Like, no, the way it worked, the way, it's the way it worked and that's the way it should have been. And it was an incredible journey and it is still an incredible journey and made me who I am. But I don't want to be like, oh my God, I wish I wouldn't have transferred to Hoffenheim. Maybe at Bayern I could have done this or maybe I should have gone somewhere else. Like, no, like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing what I love to do still. And like putting it all in perspective and taking away the pressure is... It's the key thing for me, yeah. And um, let's just go back to that COVID time. It was difficult. Everything was unpredictable in the footballing market. Do you yeah. think if COVID hadn't or wasn't uh, in the world, do you think that your career would have taken another turn? 
I think so. Not because um, not because I think I would have had much better chances to go somewhere else, but I was very caught up in the situation before COVID. That I'm like, this is my path. This is my ultimate goal. And I'm going to dedicate everything I have to becoming a professional player. But through COVID, I got sent home for, I don't know, two months maybe. So I actually moved back in with my family. And while you weren't allowed to see people inside, like I still got to see my friends from home, like go on walks in the forest or I don't know, play soccer with them somewhere where we can still practice um, social distancing and stuff like this. And those two months gave me a lot of perspective in a way of like, I realized like, wait a, wait a second, like this really makes you so much more happy than being, than questioning yourself every single day before you go on the field and like, it's uh, like while I was in it, I didn't feel how upsetting it was for me. But as soon as I got set that setback that I'm like looking at it from a different angle made me realize that I want more out of my life, that I need something else. Because right now, the way it's going at Hoffenheim, it is very, very unsettling because I'm not enjoying what I'm doing the way I want to enjoy it. It's not that I would miss my times at Hoffenheim because I still had a great time there. But the, the soccer component just wasn't right when I wasn't playing because I just didn't like it. And I don't think without COVID, I would have gained that perspective. I think I would have stayed in that rabbit hole of like, I need to make it, I need to make it, I need to get better, I need to get better. Because I think I was talking earlier about like my first injury at Hoffenheim. And I think a big part of it was that I was just completely overworking myself because I stopped playing. So I felt like, who needs recovery? Like I can just go out and train more and I need to get better because I want to play again. So I just, every day I spend at least two, three hours on my own practicing by myself with individual coaches, with my teammates working on specific stuff and a lot of fun but a lot of pressure in a way of like that I put on myself about like you need to make this happen you need to become better otherwise you will never make it on the field and then you start overthinking it and like COVID gave me the perspective about like wait a second like you don't have to do all this you can still play yeah. soccer and be valued for other components of who you are and what brings to you and like I never thought of it, but like I probably was in a time of my life where I defined myself slowly, solely through being a soccer player, a football player. And that's just not who I am, because I think I hope um, there's much more to me than just this guy who plays a little bit of soccer. So I always was like, let me let me try to find a way of like reconnecting with myself a little bit more and finding other ways to still be with the game, but also enjoying who I am and what I'm doing yeah exactly so so the covid pa uh, pandemic definitely gave you another perspective because okay. you were working yourself very hard because you weren't playing obviously and you thought that by training more you know because you now you didn't play so you could train a bit more and but but then covid came and it gave you another perspective you know there's more to alex than just football i want to learn i want to grow as a human being and i think that's not only a footballing thing it's a it's a thing in life where we have to grow we we realize okay a door closes and then we have to move on to the next one and see what it brings do you think that um now that you've moved out from the footballing the professional environment at least that you have found that next door i think so i i do think that moving to another country like <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of tough because like I've never been here and I was like you know what let me move next month to the United States and see what happens so moving somewhere where I didn't know anybody my English now I would say is pretty decent but way back it it wasn't <laughs> it definitely was a challenge like a big language barrier and like all that stuff being exposed to such a new culture making my living over here completely on my own that's not like all right let me just drive home to see my family for two days oh i have to do laundry i can i can drop it off in my mom's so house like no like stuff yeah. like this doesn't it just doesn't work like that when you're so far away and like i think being here for me personally like helped me grow as an individual incredibly because i had to do it all on my own and i had the chance to and like what's unique about the united states you have an incredible support system around you because we literally at the school we have so many people that are just their whole purpose of their job is to make my life easier which is incredible and yeah. they do it with passion and like having this support system is incredible but at the end after all it comes down to it's me myself and i and i have to do what i want to do and i think that learning this was incredible and like throughout my studies and throughout my exposure here to all these different characters this international crowd like all this i learned so much more about life and about myself 
that I developed further interests and kind of like now I can picture myself in a different environment than just being a football player. And I, I always thought of myself that way because I always wanted to graduate from something and I always wanted to like have a second leg I can stand on. But like now I'm like actually like using that leg and like fully going for that while never stop stopping to play soccer. So it's incredible for me that I have the chance to combine all different parts of my life here and that I that I have the chance to to combine hard work with pleasure and with, I don't know, a lot of passion. Yeah, and uh, definitely a, a huge step from, and also a culture shock, Germany to the United States. It's yeah. a lot different. Europe to the Americas, it's a lot different. Um, let's just go back again, because I have been very intrigued. You know, <laughs> I don't personally play football. I watch a lot of football. I analyze the sport. I talk with big talents obviously um but i want to go back because you've also had that feeling of meeting your idols your the legends of the game i want to take a look at the best people you've played with and also let's talk about pep guardiola first because he was your coach uh, or he was the coach at bayern munich at that time what was the experience learning from one of the best managers of all time um what was the experience um incredible because he has so much passion for that game and he is so incredibly football smart it's insane like hearing him in the video room analyzing different teams and talking about like all right guys that's what we're gonna do is insane because he opens your eyes you you look at football in a complete different way the way he breaks it down the way he explains it to you and like What was insane with him, what was so wonderful to be exposed to that is that he goes on the field and he's like, you know, there are different types of coaches, but he's that coach who is like fully hands on, like he is yeah. running around, he is screaming around in the most positive way. He's like, oh, well done, guys, keep going, keep going, keep going. And like, it might be his his temperament, but his personality, but like all the love he has for that game and like all this knowledge he has about that game is just so inspiring and like working underneath him and like, getting like the smallest suggestions from him, you take them to your heart because you're a young kid and you're like, that's fucking Pep Guardiola. If someone yeah. knows something about football, it's him. So like having him tell you little things, big things, whatever it is, if it's tactical, if it's technical, if it's whatever now it is, whatever that relates to soccer, it's just you just soak it in and want to be like, give me more, give me more because this is so intriguing and so fascinating to hear about soccer from him and then being around him but also with the players that can literally execute whatever he wants them to do because they are so good it's just very very unique and like the way he coached at Bayern the impact he had on the whole club was just insane because when he became the head coach of the first team he started having meetings with the head coaches of all youth teams and it's like all right I want the whole club to play this formation and like work on this and that because I want my academy players to be ready to hop in whenever I need them. So they're like already used to the formation, to the style of playing, to whatever we have to do and how can we become more successful as a club. And I think he elevated that level at Bayern Munich on a very, very unique level because he had such a huge impact. And while he didn't win the Champions League, he definitely made Bayern Munich in a better club in a lot of different perspectives, not only the players, not only the recruiting staff but the whole club kind of like went up from his impact and that was insane and like yeah again being exposed to someone like that incredible experience very very unique having him call you by your first name during practice like oh that guy actually knows who i am that's that's kind of <laughs> great like that's huge yeah yeah and obviously you you explain it's not only the footballing side of things uh that he fixed he fixed by munich or not fixed by munich i don't know but rebuilt people. Yeah, reorganized, you know, made made the foundation for where they are now because they have obviously always been the German giants. Let's just talk about your first moment with him. What was it like meeting him for the first time? Um, incredibly, because you as a young kid, you don't know how you're supposed to act around those people. <laughs> because like on one side, like, you know, all you think you know all of them because you see them on TV every single day. And it's like... I don't know, that's Thomas Müller, that's Pep Guardiola, like all that. <laughs> But then you come and you work with them. So it's not that you go there as a fan. You go there as someone like, all right, let's get let's get to work. Let's let's get started. So it's like the first time I met him was in the video room. Um, he, we went through some tactics or like he explained to us what we were going to do in practice later. 
Um, so yeah, having that opportunity to like hear him explain what we're going to do and what the goal out of this is nice. But then when he, we walked outside to start practicing, he would always like come to the youth players and like give us some insights and be like, yo guys do this and that. And like, this is what we're going to do. And what's unique about this is that coaches don't always do that and don't have to do that because they have so many like supporting staff members that take care of the youth players and like as a head coach of a team like Bayern Munich you don't necessarily have to engage with the young academy kids but he did and that was insane because he invited us he wanted us to be there and he gave us uh, an incredible feeling because we felt like we're part of it so that was very very unique and um sorry just uh my microphone it's so stupid that's okay <laughs> Yeah, and you're obviously, uh, you were called up to a friendly game in the middle of the season, actually, in September. I watched it back, a 4-1 uh, win. But who, who were you playing again, uh, that name? Uh... I don't even know that team. It was a fourth division team. We played someone, and there was a charity game, basically, because they were going out of business. So Bayern Munich said, all right, we can play you guys, and you can get all the money you're getting from ticketing, from people that watch the game and that's going to help them so we it was a beneficial game we played against them we only had three or four pros on the team the rest were academy kids um and yeah it was very very nice very unique there yeah, i got lucky <laughs> we yeah. obviously won for one but um i got incredibly lucky because ribery scored a free kick goal and i was standing next to him when he took that free kick so there's a picture it's on my instagram yeah i saw it <laughs> With uh, Ribery and Rafinha, and it looks like I've been on a game with like the all the pros. Like, uh, still very nice, but like there were a lot of academy players around me. But the yeah. picture makes it look like I was like in the middle of the pros. And like, yes, I was because it was a professional environment. It was somewhere in Frankfurt, but um, yeah, it's very very nice. That was also because you know when I'm doing my analysis, okay, I'm I need to learn who am I going to interview for the next episode. And I Absolutely. went into your Instagram and I saw like. What the heck? Did this guy play with Ribery? I thought Jonathan only said he was going to play at that youth level, but he, there he was shaking uh, hands with Ribery, and I was like, okay, I, I have to readjust now because I'm talking with a star, obviously, but it's not been that feeling at all. You have um, you have been amazing throughout the, that career. And to yeah. to be with Ribery, a French legend of the game, did he say anything before the game or anything? Because he was obviously the captain at the, in the in that game. He was the captain in that game. No, he didn't really say something because that game didn't really mean something to them. We were like, yeah. all right, we're going to go out there. We're going to win. But like, let's do it. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. And like, it was insane yeah. because we had Javi Martinez, Sven Ulreich, Rafinha and Ribery were there. And those three guys on the field with Ulreich in the back, it's just like, they carried that whole game because they were so yeah. good. They could have won that game just the three of the, just the four of them, and they make it so easy for everyone around them to look good because they are so incredibly good. Like yeah. it's in a whole nother level. They are like I practice with the first team of Hoffenheim too, and don't get me wrong, Hoffenheim incredible team, but the quality you have in practice at Bayern Munich is insane. It's a whole it's different another planet. Yeah, it's completely different, and like being surrounded by those guys is insane and like Ribery um what a guy like he very very funny I'm I he probably has no clue who the fuck I am but obviously <laughs> but obviously for me like being with him in the locker room and practice and stuff he's one of those guys you just want to like experience more because he is such an incredible player and like yeah I it every practice I had with him it's just always like unique to play against him and like I got lined up a lot of times against him definitely very very challenging but just so nice because he just makes you so much better and like seeing how easy he makes it look like it's just insane and like the quality he brings to the field on every single day just because he is so good is insane and now i'm just gonna spitball a bit of players and try and see if you played with them you or if you've met them you you've obviously i think you've met Lewandowski then also right you've yeah. met robin have you yeah so okay. all the old, whole the and Joshua Kimmich obviously you talked about him in the um, in the early stages of the podcast here. He's an incredible player today, but as a young as a young kid, you know, progressing through the ranks of Bayern Munich, how was that feeling? Okay, this guy from the pro team, he's giving me advice, you know. Um, so 
gifts? First of all, incredibly thankful for everyone from the pros who took the time to talk to us, to encourage us. Um, for Kimmich, the way it was, he was kind of new, like he well, he just transferred to Bayern. So he wasn't the big star he is now um, when I interacted with him. But he was obviously like incredible talent that was going to make it sooner or later. Um, but yeah, no, he was just like one of those guys that like, all right, I'm still young. Like we're a similar -ish age. So I want to like, I've been like, two years from ago, he was in the situation we were in. So like he could relate to us very, very well. So like having him there and explaining stuff to us is incredible. David Alaba, like he came through the Youth Academy of Bayern Munich, like him sitting down with us and like asking us about our journey, who we are and what, what we do and like stuff like this, incredible. Thomas Müller, like, yeah, he was, he's such a funny guy. Like the way you see him <laughs> in interviews, that's how he is in real life too. And like being exposed to that insane. But then you also have like guys like, Robin, for example, like he didn't really care if the youth players were there. He was super nice, but he was like, as soon as I step on the field, I'm going to work my ass off to become even better and better and yeah. better. And if a youth academy player isn't bringing the level I need to get better, then I'm not going to hold back because he's a, like, I'm not going to cut him slack because he's young. Like he's here. So he has to, he has to perform. And like, those are the different personalities. And I think it's, it's, it was very interesting to see the different dynamics and the the way the game over there is played, interpreted, and lived. And so, yeah, that was always very, very special. Yeah, let's just go back to the present now. Uh, you're playing in Maryland and everything, and we're mm -hmm. going into a stage of football. There's the Euros here in uh, in Germany, actually, this year. Are you going to, to support Germany? Are you going back to Germany to watch them, or are you going to stay I mean, in, in the U.S.? I gonna support them for sure and although we're going through a rough path right now i still have hopes that we can we can succeed and um, i'm not sure if i'm going home i'm definitely gonna go home for a little bit but i'm not sure if i'm gonna make it to a game um because it's first of all incredibly expensive yeah. and i just don't know how much time i will have to actually go back to germany because i kind of have my life right now over here so i'm probably not gonna go to a game but i'm definitely gonna watch i'm definitely gonna support and yeah and i'm gonna be supporting denmark uh, let's try and get the trophy this time <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. we are also very shit at the moment <laughs> but yeah i don't think there's any more to talk about we've obviously maybe we could bring you on next time but it's been an absolute honor to have you on and taking time out of your day and you know you in the university, so obviously you are. You let's, let's talk about that life. You know, you're in the university. What were you? I I read on Maryland's page you were. What were you majoring in? Uh, supply chain management. Yeah, I got my undergraduate in supply chain management from the business school here, and now I'm studying information systems in grad school. Um. So yeah, no, I. For me, definitely like one of the main reasons when I came here is like I want to get a degree out of this. I want to make my time worth it. But um, what I love about being here is that it's not mutually exclusive. Like you can succeed and put all you have towards soccer, football, but you can also still be in the classroom and you still like, since this is a campus school, we have like what, 40,000 kids live here, I think, just at the school. So like you still have wow. that social student life and like, yeah, it's incredible because you have all these three components to life that you can live to its best, I guess. And like, yeah, it's just, it's very, very cool that I have the chance to play soccer on that level, go to an incredible school, academic school, and still have a social life that gives me everything. Like I met so many incredible people over here that are my, for sure, going to be my lifelong friends. And yeah, it's very, very unique. And like the exposure to such an international environment just gives you a whole lot of perspective on everything because you have people coming from all over the world to study and play here and being surrounded by that is just very, very unique and very, very cool. Yeah, and I must ask you, you've been through so much during your life as a football. You've been locked in in that academy kind of environment. But now coming out to the US, is, is this like the time of your life? You're feeling free? You're feeling that you're living life to the fullest at the moment? You've never had that before because you were locked in the academy world. That is very, very true. Um, I definitely sometimes get overwhelmed. Like, for example, since I'm in America, we have a summer break of like three months almost. I haven't had that much time off in my entire life since <laughs> I'm 
12 like i don't know like i never had time to go on big vacations or anything because when we would have uh, we were off from school we would practice twice a day so we could get some more work in um and like having that much free time is definitely very very nice because you can make so much out of it but i wouldn't call it the time of my life because i think i'm so incredibly lucky that i had so many like yes i'm kind of old for like a young soccer player but like i'm still only 23 and i had the chance to experience so many insanely unique moments that so many people want to experience but never get the chance to deserved undeserved whatever for whatever reasons but like for me being lucky enough that i had all those incredible moments um and still carry it on is just very unique so like yes i am I'm very happy to be where I'm at right now and it definitely is living life to the fullest but I wouldn't say that I didn't do that before because while people always talk about like youth academy players they have to sacrifice so much they like it's such a grind because you you have to dedicate yourself to everything and like yeah I get it but after all like I don't think it's sacrificing anything because it opens you so many doors it yeah. gives you so many unique opportunities and if you love something I would sacrificing is like a word that's kind of like it, it kind of has a negative connotation with it because it's like I'm giving up something but no like it's just like you're giving you're making a conscious decision to do something for something that you love and that you want to do so I don't think I ever had to sacrifice anything and big shout out to Yona for example my family and like those guys were always there to support me in everything I did and like while I was very busy with school and soccer and everything and I'm still am I never lost like the connection to my roots and where I'm from and like I'm very family oriented I talk to them as often as I can talk to my friends from home as often as I can no matter where I'm at in the world right now so like I've been living life to the fullest and I got very lucky that I that I always had people around around me that supported me to be there so yeah I I don't think I ever had to sacrifice something I only think that I only got more out of it yeah, because sacrifice is a it's a big word. Because what is sacrifice? You're exactly. doing something. Uh, yeah, exactly. You you're putting something aside for something better. But that's not a sacrifice in your eyes because you're working towards something better in the future. You're just laying off that time now to you know pursue something later, and Absolutely. you've done that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean. Yeah, sometimes when you're young, it's like, oh my God, all my friends are going to party every weekend. It's so fun. It's like, I can't do it because I have a game. But like, did I really miss something? I don't know. When when the boys were partying and I'm sure they had a great time and like, I don't want to like miss that. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I would probably would have loved it the same way. But like, it was never that I'm like, I'm feeling I'm missing out on something because while they were partying, I was on the way to go to India to play a World Cup. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, exactly. It because kinda, you get compensated it, of those experiences. Yeah, it's, like, it's just very different. So it's not that I'm like missing out on something because I'm I've always had the chance to like have those incredible moments and experiences. Uh, Alex, I think we've been through so much. It's been one and a half hour and the time zone here is is actually it's actually a bit different yeah it's for me it's half past six at the moment for you it's probably 12 o'clock soon yeah 12 30 already it's 12 30 so we've been talking for a bit yeah you know yeah. it the the only final thing i would have to say really is that i right now have a cousin who is playing at Olborg BK. You probably know, don't know what it is. It's probably a shit club. <laughs> we actually relegated from the Danish first division last year into the second. It's one of the biggest clubs in Denmark, or it was until it. They did a Schalke kind of relegation, I have to yeah. say, and they're in a rebuild. He's playing under 14s at the moment, and mm -hmm. you know there's big pressure from the family. You know he is the one, the kid. And I'm always trying to like shush his dad because, you know, take it easy. He's playing football for fun and, you know, he's going to get there. Don't worry. So just to give this to the family, just to hear it from a Bayern Munich player, a player who's played with uh, with Ribery and obviously everything. It's a big thing for him, I think. Is there some advice you would give a, a young academy player like him? 13 years of age at the moment. <laughs> 13 years old. Wonderful. His whole life ahead. Um, I would say enjoy every moment while it lasts and never feel the pressure that you have to accomplish anything, but always remember that you can accomplish everything. Like you don't have to, but you can. And like, don't give up on your dreams easily. There are might, there will be for sure some rough paths, but they will come either way, soccer or not soccer related. So 
stay through them always remember the people close to you only want the best for you but don't put soccer in a perspective where it's like this is the only way i have this is the only thing i can do don't let anyone define you just as a football player be yourself enjoy every single moment you have and go out there and have as much fun as possible make it make it worth it you hear that iron you're gonna make it you you heard it from a bayern munich player right here No pressure from me, no pressure from him. We're gonna, no. I'm going to be here to support. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. I think he's going to appreciate that. Um, it's been a wonderful conversation. I've really gotten a different perspective on football because I get blinded every day. I, I talk with the talents like, okay, you're really close to the top, but just take it easy. To get another perspective on the game, I think it's been good for me and it's something I'm going to use uh, to interview the other players. And... It's been a learning experience for me. I hope you've been happy as well here to to contribute to our, to our podcast. You're the biggest guest we have on at the moment. So, yeah, and the first I English episode. It. I really really appreciate it. No, I had a I had a great time. You know, got the chance to show off a little bit. No. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Kidding. Exactly. It was, no, it was a, you know, like reliving those moments is incredible talking to to you about all these experiences like having this conversation with you was more than incredible for me and I'm like incredibly thankful that there was a way that we guys got connected. And yeah, no, I I'm happy that I hope I hope people will listen to this. I hope people will enjoy it and yeah, no, I'm very thankful that I got the chance to speak here and be here and like yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was incredible. It's been great. So remember, first English episode, go into the Spotify, go ahead and follow us now. Go ahead and follow Alex on Instagram. I'm going to link it down in the description of Spotify and YouTube. It's Alexander Nitzel or Alex Nitzel on Instagram. You can also follow me, but um, just follow Alex first. It's his episode today. It's been amazing to have you. Thank you so much and uh, all the best in the United States. So uh, we're going to lock off. You can say goodbye to the fans as well if you want to. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, if there's anything, don't hesitate, reach out. I'll be here. Um, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. This was incredible. So that's it. Thank you. I will see you next time, hopefully in Danish, where we find some big Danish talent. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>